The Bayer Dynamic 1770s aren't really a new headphone, but they're a pair that I could still recommend today that I think stand up incredibly well, and in my opinion are a pair of headphones that have never really received the love they deserve. In a lot of audio forums, opinions can be kind of mixed, and a lot of people end up recommending their open back brothers, the 1990s, which I also own, and I'll compare and talk about in this video. But I'm also going to get into why, in my opinion, I actually prefer the 1770s a lot of the time, despite acknowledging that there are some clear advantages the 1990s and others offer. I've been a headphone enthusiast since I was probably 12 years old, and so in all of those years, I've tried a lot of headphones, uh, cycled them out, bought, sold, etc. And sometimes they can kind of blur together, where you try a new headphone and you're like, yeah, it sounds good, but so did several others. Some of them have a little bit better soundstage or a little bit better clarity or bass. It's always refreshing when you put on a pair of headphones where there's something obvious about them, where you're like, wow, this is distinct. This thing, this quality of the way the sound is on these headphones are pretty different than any others that I've tried or that I own. And it would be a reason if I own a few different pairs of high-end headphones that I would pick this pair uh, for certain things. And the 1770s for me really stood out that way. And while I don't want to diminish the description of them by simply stating they're the best bass in any headphone that I've ever heard, uh, because I think they bring a lot more to the table than just a bass, which I'll talk about. That, to me, is the biggest standout thing when I wear these. And I, when I say best bass, I mean both in terms of they still stay controlled and pretty tight. Um, maybe not entirely as tight as the 1990s, the open backs, but it comes at the benefit of it has a lot more punch and a lot more impact, and it will play with authority all the way down. It is the closest I've ever heard in a headphone to the sound of my home theater system with a big subwoofer on it and its ability to handle low frequencies. I think Josh Velour said it well in his review of the 1770s where he basically said, a lot of headphones say they will play that deep, but there's play that deep and then there's play it with like full presentation all the way down, and I agree. So headphones like these 1990s or even the Denon AHD 5000s, which I've had for over 10 years, and when I first got them, they were they were at the time the best bass headphone that I had ever heard, and that was my favorite thing about them for a long time. Both of those headphones will play down pretty deep into subwoofer levels, but the bass does taper off, and you don't realize how much it tapers off until you listen to a headphone where it doesn't really taper off, and it can surprise you by how much different that sounds with you know, this low 30 hertz kind of bass note is just as loud as a 50 or 60 hertz uh, bass note. It's great for watching movies, great for games, which I'll talk about, and certain songs. When I started listening to these and, and got a taste of how good the bass was, immediately I had a couple tracks that I was like, I've got to listen to this on. One of them is a song called Solitude by Typhon. It's kind of a electronic uh, kind of song, but it's got some really deep, like hard, slamming bass. If you were to listen to it on a subwoofer in a car or something, it would like rattle your seat. Um, it just has this boom, boom kind of beat. That sounded phenomenal on these headphones, exactly how I figured it would when I went reaching for that song. The artist Edit, you go to the album Crying Over Pros for No Reason. That entire album is a great demo of what these headphones can do again because of the different types of bass but also there's a lot of really quick panning effects and sounds throughout the album and that's one of the other things i think these headphones do phenomenally well is they have excellent stereo imaging your sense of directionality is really strong on these it was just as good on the 1990s as well but for a closed back headphone that's a really nice quality of these now yes the sound stage on closed headphones isn't as good. On the 1990s, you definitely have a more open sense of presentation, and I would describe how I perceive the difference between the 1990s and the 1770s as, on the open back 1990s, it sounds more like I'm sitting in a room surrounded by the band playing live in front of me. It sounds like real, like they're actually there in the room with me, whereas on the closed back 1770s, it sounds like a really good quality recording, or if you believed they were there with you, it's like they're really close. You still get this sense of left and right directionality, but in terms of like how, 
distant? How far around me does it sound? How spacious does it feel like they are around me? That's diminished a bit. So that is a real, if you prize having a big sound stage uh, in your headphone, something open back definitely makes more sense. And normally I would have said that's my preference as well, but there are aspects of how intimate the sound is in a closed back headphone that I, over time, while evaluating these, kind of found myself drawn to that I really enjoyed, actually. And definitely when I started gaming with these, that really mattered. Uh, it makes the sound a little bit more in your face, which some people might not like. But I also find that the, like, 7 or 8 kilohertz treble peak that the 1990s are infamous for is less pronounced on these. Now with the 1990s, I noticed that getting the Dakoni Elite hybrid ear pads, not only being very comfortable, also helped alleviate some of that treble peak. I think with the stock leatherette uh, ear pads of the 1770s, that's not really been an issue uh, for me. They're bright, they're somewhat bright headphone and it has like a kind of an in your face sound, like I said, but it's not like harsh, like I think the 1990s are. And that to me is a win with these. And if you listen to a lot of electronic music or you watch movies on your headphones, or if you game on them, a couple games in particular that I played with these on that I was blown away by, I played Subnautica for a while uh, with these on the atmosphere around me was very cool. Probably the best two games though uh, that I tried on these that just I felt like made the experience was Alien Isolation and I also played Dead Space, the original. And wow, like what a sense of atmosphere these headphones give you. Uh, that depth of bass really gives like foreboding like musical notes and things in the scenery, uh, a great sense of presence. And that excellent stereo imaging, man, does that make sounds coming from around you? If you're going to have like a jump, oh, geez, I just heard something like that's super well represented on these. And I find the detail of these excellent. Um, probably some of the best detail I've heard in a pair of headphones. Now, that's not to say there aren't more detailed headphones, but I have not yet heard it. Uh, I think it has every bit as much detail as the 1990s, which I would have said the same thing when I first tried these, that they were kind of the best that I'd ever heard, even if the, the tonal presentation is a little different between these headphones. And to me, even though in a way the openness of the 1990s, you could make the argument is really good for games because it makes things sound spatially a little bit more realistic, on the other hand, like I said, the intimateness of a closed back headphone where it kind of walls you off from your surroundings and it's just you and the sounds in the game. There's something about that for me that I just really find appealing about these. And ever since I've been using them, they've been my daily driver. I've still got these other two pair of headphones, but I find most days I'm like, this brings the detail. It has the excellent stereo imaging and man, does it have the bass. And if you've watched any of my other audio reviews, you know that as much as I like detail, as much as the next guy, I love bass. And man, I have never heard bass like these headphones. And I don't feel like you're making a big sacrifice for it. Like I said, it's not muddy and it's not sloppy, which is awesome. Some people probably will perceive that as too bass heavy, uh, which fair enough. The directionality and detail in games like I mentioned, um, like Alien Isolation and Dead Space, man, did that make me jump a couple of times if the alien is coming around the corner and you can kind of hear it or there's like steam and vents and things going on or a monster that you can hear kind of moving around somewhere, but you're not clear where, but you, and it, and it really just adds to the sense of suspense that you can hear the movement of it as it's like moving around and you're really like, oh geez, where is it? Um, but I can see where that would be helpful in first person shooters as well, that, that that excellent imaging really helps you like pinpoint where you're hearing opponents and things like that. And of course, I've played these headphones on my good old Fallout 4 that I've done a video about recently. Um, I put a lot of hours into that game. I don't think that these headphones bring that game to life as much, but that's not as atmospheric of a game. But still, the sound quality and the detail is on point. And for gunplay and explosions, definitely the general impact that these headphones bring, that's a great experience. Now on these, just like the 1990s, although their design is a little different, you can see on the cups um, being closed versus open, the build quality between both of them is excellent. Um, they are a little bit heavier of a headphone than 
my Denon D5000s. Um, because these are magnesium and wood construction, they're a pretty light headphone. They're very comfortable. These are probably one of the more comfortable headphones I've ever worn. But these, I still don't have an issue. And I think that's a, a praise I would say to the headband on top because with no hair on top, I often find that if the headband isn't like top notch, it will get sore. I don't have any padding up here. Um, I don't notice that with these when I've done long listening sessions, long gaming sessions, etc. One thing I would recommend to anyone, because I did it on my 1990s and I've somewhat regretted it since, is people say if you don't like how strong the clamping force is, you can take the headband and kind of stretch it open a little bit and then these will like not clamp as tight. True, but the side effect of doing that is if there's less clamping on the sides, then more of it, more of the weight ends up on the top. And I do find, even though these have pretty much the same headband on top, my 1990s do create a hot spot on the top of my head after doing that. And since I haven't done the headband flex on these, I don't notice it. And so I would say if you're a person who doesn't like a lot of pressure on top, settle for the clamping force on the sides if you can, because it'll alleviate some of that. Now these have a fairly high sensitivity, about 102 decibels per milliwatt, but as a 250 ohm headphone, I would definitely recommend that you have a headphone amp of some kind. It's not that they can't be driven out of a phone or another device, but it won't be an ideal experience. And definitely make sure you're feeding a headphone of this level with a good quality DAC, uh, whether that's a built-in sound card that you've purchased or an external DAC of some kind. Um, the difference, aside just saying the detail is better, as an example, I can HDMI from my Xbox or my PC into my monitor here, and the monitor actually has a headphone jack on it, and I have tested them that way. Volume-wise, the monitor actually does a good job of driving them, but what you really lose is, A, all of that bass that makes these headphones great. It's just not really there. And the excellent sense of panning that you get with these, yeah, you also just don't really notice that as much. And so aside the details not being quite as crisp, some of the best parts about what these headphones bring, you're just not really noticing as much. And when I plugged my Sound Blaster G6 uh, back into the setup and ran the headphones back out of that for gaming, immediately I was like, wow, what a better presentation. The, the sense of environment was back again. The bass was way better. Um, and the sound was more balanced. Because there was actually like lower mids and bass, it didn't sound as jarring. When I plugged it in out of a cheaper output, the other thing I noticed is if you have the volume up high enough to get the level that you want, highs are almost like too much uh, because there's not like enough of that low end, whereas a more balanced presentation just made it feel like the overall sound output was more even, if you will, than just having certain frequencies that blew your head off and everything else was sort of disappointing. So that would be the best way I can think of off the top of my head to explain some of the benefits that you would get from using a good DAC. Uh, for someone who maybe hasn't invested in a DAC and is curious, like, what is the real benefit of that? That, to me. Uh, the soundstage, the detail, the sense of panning, and more often than not, I don't want to make it all about the bass, but often when I don't use a good DAC, for some reason, I notice that's one of the big areas that suffers on a cheap DAC, is it just doesn't have much bass, or if it does have bass, it's kind of muddy, it's not articulate. Um, so I've had cheap DACs where the higher end sounds okay, but like if there's an area that's going to suffer, it's usually the lower mids and the deeper bass. Um, so those are the areas where that really matters, even if you have enough volume. A question I get asked a lot in comments when I've talked headphones and audio before is how big and powerful of an amp do you need for certain headphones? And I know that there's some people that turn their nose up at options like the Sound Blaster G6 because they think, oh, USB powered could never deliver enough power. Well, in high gain mode on those, I don't think I ever go above 30, 35% probably most of the time. I think the highest I've ever had it is probably 40-ish percent uh, on the volume slider. And that's been plenty. That's pretty loud. And so I call that totally sufficient headroom on those. If you have a particularly hard to drive headphone, maybe you would want more power, but I feel like something like the G6, which has a, a two volt RMS output, 
Uh, I think that's sufficient for most headphones. It certainly is for these at 250 ohms, and 250 ohms is pretty high. I've seen headphones that are like 300-ish uh, on average, some of the Sennheisers, but I feel like in that range, you're pretty well represented with that level of power. Now, in the beginning of the video, I talked about how it's nice to find a pair of headphones that really like stands out to you, and I think the reason these, for the time being, have become my daily driver is... Yeah, I'm missing some of the soundstage with these that I would get on some of my more open headphones. Uh, but it's a trade-off for that intimate kind of listening experience and that awesome bass that is just, to me, it's worth the trade-off. Uh, when I wear the 1990s or my other Denon headphones, it's still a great experience. But with these, I feel like every time I put them on, I'm getting sort of a unique experience. And while I agree with points made by much bigger headphone folks like Critical, who says there's really no such thing as a gaming headphone that's just a marketing title put on it, you can game with any headphone, that's absolutely right. And in, and in fact... I would say this is a good example of a headphone that is probably, in my opinion, significantly better for games than a lot of headphones that wear the moniker gaming headphone that are kind of lower end. These are an expensive pair of headphones. They're over $500 new MSRP, so they're not for everyone, although you can often get them used for three or $400 uh, online. If this level of headphone is in your budget, I strongly recommend it uh, for the right type of individual. If you're somebody who is familiar with the way that closed back headphones sound and so the the lack of openness that you get with other headphones isn't going to bother you if you love bass and you love super razor sharp detail these are going to be a great pick for you and if you game and you're a bit of an audiophile i would really recommend these for all the reasons i talked about the sense of atmosphere and direction on these is fantastic and it sort of it transformed the experience on certain games uh, that now kind of when I think of Dead Space, I think of my experience recently with these because it really altered the experience in a distinct way more than listening on speakers or other headphones that I've done in the past has. Same for Alien Isolation. Um, what an experience with these headphones. I'll make some follow-up content on these headphones as I try them in different scenarios in case I have more to talk about, but that's pretty much what I wanted to say today. If you've been thinking about a pair of headphones at roughly this price point for games and for music, something that's fun and has a lot of like exciting impact. I would definitely recommend these headphones. And of course, they are a headphone that was meant for sound engineers as well. So if that's you, obviously these make sense. But they often get talked about in that context. And I think they make a lot of sense for certain music lovers and for gamers for sure. If you have questions that I haven't talked about in this video, throw them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And otherwise, catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.